You have probably watched a ball roll off a table and wondered where it would land. You may also have wondered if you could predict its final location. In this lab, we'll roll a ball down a ramp tube and utilize Tracker to determine the X velocity as it rolls horizontally across the table. To build a computational model of VIDL, I set some initial conditions. I created a variable called table Y, which was the height of the table, and that was 0.854. Uh, meters. I set gravity at 9.8. I measured the ball radius and entered that uh, and I added a very small time step. Uh, after that section uh, I added a, uh, a CSV uh, piece to write to a spreadsheet. I created a loop statement that utilized the height of the table uh, times uh, 0.5 times minus gravity times time squared uh, which is the vertical displacement of time formula and after solving for that, I used the 1.098 meters per second velocity that I acquired from Tracker and used that to predict the X displacement. The ball's position was updated and looped until the ball reached the floor. Uh, I added a statement to print out the time uh, for it to drop, delta X, the delta Y. Uh, after running the animation, it showed a parabolic motion, which is what I had expected it to resemble. Using a plumb bob, we will determine the vertical edge of the table on the floor and measure the height of the table. This data and our knowledge of physics will be used to predict where the ball will land as it hits the floor. To begin the lab, I created a low angled ramp to roll the ball down and across the table. The reason for a low angled ramp is to minimize the transition from the ramp to the table, as a steeper angle may cause unwanted interference by bouncing the ball rather than just rolling it with a constant velocity in the X positive direction. Using a plumb bob, find the edge of the table and locate its position on the floor. This will be useful to identify the X zero position located where the ball left the edge of the table and will also be used with later measurements. We'll also need to measure the height of the table in meters. Utilizing the height measurement of the table and calculating for the vertical components of motion we can solve for the time it takes for the projectile to hit the floor. This is independent of the X velocity and its acceleration is only by gravity acting on the projectile. I measured the height of the table to be 0.854 meters. Knowing the delta Y, I added the 0.854 meters to the equation. The right side of the equation cancels out as the initial acceleration in the Y direction was zero. Solving for T, I calculated that it would take 0.8 4175 seconds for the ball to fall a distance of 0.854 meters. Next we'll need to record our projectile rolling along the table to calculate an average velocity in the X positive direction. We'll utilize the tracker program to do this. Import and set the video clip settings to match the frame rate of your video. Select the calibration stick and set it to match the meter stick on the table. Set the axis to the edge of the table with the Y positive pointing upward and the X positive pointing towards the right. Adjust the start and end frames to the portion of the video that you would like to analyze and add points to the ball as it rolls down and across the table and lands on the floor. We'll utilize the X axis between the ball exiting the ramp and just before it leaves the table to calculate the velocity for your project. This data is attained by Tracker and can be calculated by dividing the X final minus X initial by T final minus T initial. The velocity in the X direction was calculated to be 1.098 meters per second. We can simplify the equation by canceling the right side as the acceleration in the X direction is zero. Substituting the 0.4175 seconds it takes the ball to fall and the X velocity, we can solve for the delta X. I calculated the X distance from the plug bomb point on the floor to where I estimated the ball would land to be 0.4584 meters. With this data, I measured from the plumb bob point on the floor and taped a piece of paper to the floor and drew a three centimeter circle on the paper, indicating a target zone. I placed a piece of carbon paper on top of the paper and placed a second piece of paper on top of that. When the ball lands, the carbon paper will leave a mark indicating where it landed. 
My hope was that it would land inside the circle. With the camera rolling and the ball accelerating due to gravity down the tube, it rolled across the table where it had a constant acceleration in the X positive direction. We can see the projectile's parabolic motion recorded from tracker indicating the path it took. With both vertical calculations for time and the horizontal calculation for velocity, we can predict the landing location and prove that the Y and X component of motion are independent. This velocity along the X axis graph compares the values from V idle to tracker. Next we can see the Y axis acceleration due to gravity comparing the tracker to the V idle program. As you can see there were very little discrepancies between the two sets of data and when compared to the results in the video they were very very similar. When the carbon and extra sheet of paper were removed, you can see how close we were to the actual landing spot. I measured the distance from the plumb bob to the carbon mark and found it to be 0.45 meters. When compared to the calculation of 0.4584 meters, all three sets of calculations came out very close.